AKG K712 Pro, Bayer Dynamic DT1990 Pro, AKG K371, Mini XLR connector, Mini XLR connector, and Mini XLR connector. Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pro with a Mini XLR connector. Yep, I modded these a few weeks ago and it's been really great to be able to switch between all four of these headphones just by connecting the cable between each one. I don't need to swap the cable. But I also have the ATOM Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pro and I'm going to be taking this out and swapping this with a Mini XLR connector. So let's get into it. Before we get started, I'm going to go through a few things that I need. So I'm going to use a cutting mat. I'm obviously going to need a mini XLR connector here. So this one's from Reen. Going to need a pair of snips and a screwdriver. Going to need a rotary tool of some kind. This is obviously a knockoff Dremel. A soldering iron. A pair of wire cutters. Some solder and a tip cleaning tool, some wire, this is ordinary copper wire, a hot glue gun, a multimeter, perhaps a knife of some kind, maybe some tweezers, some additional bits for the rotary tool, I might need some heat shrink, and then a heat gun or a lighter, obviously a stand for the soldering iron, some flux, and a heat resistant mat just in case I need that. Oh, and one last thing, I have a pair of magnifying goggles because uh, my eyesight isn't that great for small detail. I might not need these, but it's good to have. Right, so let's get started. Right, so this is my DT770 Pro ATM with the cable, the original cable still fitted. So I just need to take off the left hand ear pad, which is just simply just pulling it off. I'm going to take them both off because I want to keep this one clean and I don't want to get anything on this one. So I'm just going to take them both off and put them aside for now. So first things first, we're going to need our screwdriver. And this here is a retention ring, which is holding the driver in place. And we just need to take that out. And that involves using the screwdriver to basically lever it out of here. And this can be a little bit tricky and you need to be a bit careful with this, but it should be a case of just popping the screwdriver in like so and then just levering it up. And then you can just take the rest off. So put that aside somewhere safe. We've also got a little piece of foam here. I want to keep this clean, so I'm going to take this out. And then we have the driver itself. Now taking the driver out is pretty simple. You just need to tap it out. That well, actually fell out quite simple, so that's nice. And um, we're going to need to put this one aside. Um, keep note of its orientation. So the, um, the fins, they face up away from the driver. And at this point, it would probably be a good idea to take a photo of the wires as they attach to the driver. Excuse the camera, it's swinging on its arm. But um, taking a photo here would be a good idea because then you'll know which wire is which. And what I'm actually going to do, because I am not 100% which driver, which wire is which right now, I'm going to use a multimeter to check that against the other end of the cable. So as you can see, the standard wire that comes in, you've got a green, a red, and also the copper color here. So you have the green on the left side, the red in the middle, and the copper all the way over on the right hand side. So I just need to work out which colors are which and where they correspond with the plug. So for this one, I'm checking the sleeve. So the copper would be the sleeve. Red is the ring. And of course the green then is the tip. So I'm just gonna make a note of that. Okay, so that's that decided. So we know which one is which. So now I can go ahead and cut the cable out of here and then desolder it from the driver. I mean, ideally, if you can avoid soldering on the driver itself, then that would be the best thing. 
it, it minimizes any risk of damaging the driver. But with the way things are, with how short these little wires are, it's going to be extremely difficult to actually do anything with these. So the best thing to do is just cut them off and then uh, solder on some new wire that's a little bit longer and easier to work with. So I'm just going to cut this. Might be better off using a pair of scissors for this because uh, it is lit. Okay, so that's the driver detached. Now we can just take the cable out. And there's a little retention clip here, a little metal retention clip. And you can just pull this out. Ooh, it's just flicked all the way out. There you go. And then you can just pull the cable out. Job done. Now, unfortunately, you are tied into this cable that goes through to the other side. You can pull it forwards a little bit um, to give yourself a little bit more room. But this is this is the most difficult part with these, is that you kind of have to deal with this all as one piece. And you have to work around this. And that can be a bit, uh, a bit annoying. Right, before I continue with doing any soldering, what I'm going to do now is drill the hole out. So as you can see, this is a square hole and the mini XLR connector is round. So we need to fit a round object into a square hole. So that's why we need this to cut this hole out. Now, the thing to note is that the driver sits in this recessed part all the way around the outside. And that hole is very close to that recessed part. So we don't want to go past this point. Otherwise, let me use something to point. We don't want to go past this point here because otherwise when the driver sits back into it, it will be sitting further out. And we, we don't want that, obviously. We need to cut this out closer to the backside than to the front. We've got a little bit of leeway at the front here, but we need to do most of our cutting that way. Now this part's going to get a bit messy, unfortunately, so maybe not a good idea to do it on your desk like I am, but okay, YOLO. So I'm just going to start with a small bit like this. I do also have another bit to drill the hole out a little bit bigger later, but I'm going to start out with a small one so I can be a little bit more precise with this. Obviously, we don't want to go too far with this, so just keep on checking it and um, obviously get the little pieces of plastic out. Oh, that's a lot of mess right there. Okay, so that's not enough yet. As you can see, we need to go a little bit more. The best thing to do here is to keep cutting at it and then keep checking. You don't want to go too far with this. And actually at this point, I think I'm going to switch to this other tip because actually this tip is just a slight bit smaller than the mini XLR connector itself, which means that once I've bought it out to this, it's almost done. As you can see, I now have a round hole. Just clean these bits out. Now this probably isn't big enough for this yet, but it'll be almost there. Yeah, it is almost there. So I need to just now be very careful and just increase the bore of this hole just a little bit more. Mmm, the smell of melting plastic. Oh, now I could probably just about push this through here or screw it in by hand. So maybe I need to just take a tiny bit more off. I've got a little bit of plastic that's built up on the inside that I'm just going to scrape off. This is where the knife might be, uh, might come in useful, but 
Let's just get these little bits of plastic out of here. And then I think we're probably okay with this connector now. Don't think that's quite gonna go in just yet. So I need to take a tiny bit more off. Okay, so I managed to get this in. It's a bit of a pain, but there we go. So I'm gonna put the headphones aside for a moment and clean up all this mess. Okay, so I've got my mini XLR connector here and I just need to be really sure which one of these pins does what. So again, this is where we're probably gonna need a multimeter. Okay, so I've just connected it up to a mini XLR cable and we'll just determine which pin is which. So these three pins are now facing me because you can see the little contact pads on the pins for the soldering. So they're facing me. So first up, I'll just take a look at the sleeve. Okay, so the sleeve is this one on the left. Which I believe is marked as pin one. You can just about see that. Okay, so now I'm checking the ring. And that's pin two, which is the one, the one at the top. And that means that the tip must be this pin over here, which is pin three. Right, I should note that at this point, a pair of helping hands might be a very useful tool. I forgot to mention that earlier, but um, I would use that to just hold things in place. And then it will just be a little bit easier to solder. And actually what I'm going to do now is solder the wire onto the connector first because it's going to be easier than trying to solder this with this inside the body of the headphone. And so we can check how long the wire needs to be. What I'm going to do is basically just measure it against the cup of the earphone itself, of the headphone itself. So I'm going to say, right, it needs to be about that long. Okay, so I've got three colors of wire about the right length. And I'm going to use black for the tip, red for the ring, and white for the sleeve. I'm just going to use my wire strippers to just strip back a section of the wire. There we go. I may as well do them at both ends at the same time. There we go, that's those stripped. Okay, so this next bit, I've actually gone ahead and soldered these wires onto this connector already. Um, <laughs> I actually forgot to hit record on the camera, so oh well. But um, this this is the, the the fiddliest part, or one of the fiddliest parts at least. But I've got these uh, wires connected on, and what I've decided to do, I've actually used a little bit of ordinary copper wire. So this is just ordinary copper wire. I do have some lits but i decided not to use lits because i thought this would be a little bit too much too difficult to use with inside the uh the headphone i've also got some silver plated copper but it's a really stiff wire and this one actually is quite nice and soft and flexible so i, I figured i'd use this one it doesn't need to be a fancy copper wire because when we look at it it's only a tiny length anyway and it's copper copper is copper um to, for this kind of purpose at least so I'm actually just gonna add a little bit of heat shrink now because I just wanna protect these joints. It will help to strengthen them up a little bit. And also if anything brushes against it, any other um, part of the driver or anything, there, the solder point, um, that it's not gonna short anything out. I forgot to mention that these helping hands are really a good helping hand. So I forgot to mention in the in the bit of the parts work that I, the uh, tools that I was going to use, um, I forgot to mention this. But there we go. So I just put that heat shrink on like that, and then I'm going to use a heat gun to just uh, shrink it down. All right, that should keep it as secure as it's going to get. Ah, there we go. Nice. So now we can put this inside the headphone and then we can solder this onto the driver. I think I'm going to use my goggles for this because this is a little bit delicate. This is a little bit of a delicate procedure, but I'm going to take the wires off, the original wires off of the driver. We 
want the minimum amount of contact possible with the soldering iron so that we don't accidentally desolder some critical wires on the driver. We don't want to desolder the voice coil. And there we are. So I've taken those wires off, but those two little wires at the very bottom, it's two little wires at the very bottom. They're really, really tiny wires, right? These two pads here. And I'm pretty sure that those are the wires for the voice coil. And you do not want to get your soldering iron anywhere near those two pads. Right, so I'm going to insert this in now, and I want to keep the the, the latch part um, here on the outside. Right, at this point, you're going to see what I meant earlier about having these wires long enough to actually be able to solder it onto here because it's a bit difficult to actually position the driver in such a way that you can get these wires over to it and do the delicate soldering work at the same time. Yeah, it's a bit of a pain. I'm not going to lie. This is, this is probably the part that I hate the most after soldering onto the XLR connector that is. This little setup is probably as good as I'm going to get. I've clipped the helping hands to the very edges of the driver. Don't want to clip any closer than like any further over. It means I've only got a tiny grip at the ends because I don't want to damage the paper that's covering this driver. Okay, so remembering our colors, the tip is black. So we want to put the tip here. Just make sure my soldering iron tip is nice and clean. So this was tip and then ring is on this little pad here and then sleeve over here. Uh, getting this one on the ring, this one's probably the more difficult one because it's so close to this, um, this wire that goes over to the right hand cup. Delicate work. I'm sure if you're really good at soldering, this is really easy for you. Whilst I did use, do a lot of soldering when I was a kid, I haven't really done all that much since then. Okay, this last one was a bit messy, but I got it on there eventually. Now, before we put all this back together, the best thing to do right now would be to test that it actually works. So I'm just going to play a bit of music and then we'll see what's uh, if, if it's working on both sides. Okay, so the right hand side's working. And the left is working. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so next... What I want to do is uh, glue the mini XLR connector in place. So that's what we need the hot glue gun for. Now you don't want to put too much glue on the front here, otherwise when the driver sits in, it won't sit in level. So we have to be careful there. Um, but we definitely want to cover as much around here as we can with glue. And that will seal any gaps that there might be and also stop it from moving and... Uh, oops. Stop it from moving and falling out at any point. Ugh. 
So put a generous amount in around the back. And then just going to put a small strip across the front here. As a sort of a seal. And just make sure there that uh, there's nothing fouling where the driver's going to sit. Right, so I just need to leave that to dry. And then we can put this back together. Right, now to put these back together. And at this point, uh, this little collar here is meant to go back onto the driver. This gap at the bottom um, corresponds with the little solder points there. So this goes around those wires. And the problem is that this little piece here is now going to foul with the mini XLR connector. So the usual way to do this would be to just snip this in between. Now you might be able to get away with just snipping the tabs in the middle. So what I'm going to do then is just snip between these, just snip this part out here. There we go. And that should fit in nicely now. And so the gap in this piece goes at the bottom. That's the bottom. This is the top. So you want the gap there. That goes around the wires. And this bit will just, you know, it will just get squeezed. I think once you've done it a few times, it does get easier. But even then, it's still a bit of a pain. Of course, now snipping that little piece off, this doesn't sit on quite as tight either. So we have to worry about that. Line that tab up. And then hopefully should just be able to push the driver in then we pop our foam back on and we want our retaining clip again this has a little notch uh, a little uh, nubbin at the top we want to line that up with that um, gap at the top And then it should just clip in place. Okay, there we go. Now just to put the uh, pads back on. It's actually quite easy to get the pads back on a 770. Um, they're nice and loose. And then we are one DT770 80 ohm with a mini XLR connector. So I've just uh, done a quick test on them and they're working absolutely fine. So I haven't broken them, which is always a good thing. Uh, the only thing really left to do now would be to convert the original cable to a mini XLR cable. That would be something that's quite simple to do. I might do a follow-up video on that, perhaps. And with that, I think that's it. I've got a few other modding ideas for headphones, so if you want to see a lot more of this kind of thing, because I, I want to get into a bit more of that, then uh, don't forget to leave a like, and if you haven't already, then consider subscribing. Also, if you want to support the channel, I'm on Patreon now. There's a link in the description amongst some others that uh, would really help me out a lot. And if you join Patreon at any tier, you can get access to the Discord, come and have a chat. And if you join at the $5 tier or above, you can get your name over on the side here, <laughs> alongside all of these legends. So as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, have a good one. Thank you.